Okay. And your animal you use to connect to your spiritual essence as well. Your spiritual essence is the buzzing, the vibrating, the feelings that come through. Your emotions are your timeless self. It's a spiritual aspect of our experience, your feelings. And so we need to integrate that into the human experience by actually feeling palpably the frequencies through us and emoting them out into the world. Emotions, energy, and motion. Hello, friend, and welcome to the Sex Upgraded Podcast, a podcast for men all about sex, where we'll combine real, authentic, and down-to-earth conversations about sex, life, and relationships with some pretty wild personal stories and practical how-to episodes as well with guest experts from around the world to help you have the most amazing sex life you can possibly have. My name is Taylor and I'll be your host on this journey and it's my goal with each episode to give you practical, actionable things you can start doing today to improve your sex life and your entire life because a thriving sex life will help you thrive in all areas of your life. So let's begin today's episode by starting with a deep breath in through the nose into the belly together. Exhaling with an audible sigh. And let's get in to today's episode. Lion, welcome to the show. Welcome to this episode of the podcast. It's an honor to be here with you, brother. Thank you for showing up for this conversation. Now we've got a lot of really awesome Thank stuff so to go into. Yeah, yeah, man. We've got That's a lot of really fun. awesome Let's, stuff. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah. Let's awesome. do it. So, I've got an icebreaker question to start things off before we get into everything. And I ask all the guests this. And the all first right. question is basically, if you could go back in time and give yourself, your younger self, a piece of advice around sex, what would that be? What's the first thing that comes to mind? Um, it probably would be what my parents transmitted to me. I, I, was, I already got the message really healthy when I was young about freedom of sexuality and safety and how we should connect. And so I thought that was really good. I think that my, I would still want my younger self to ex- hear that. Um, yeah, I think the, the adventures that I went on in the exploration of my sexuality were part of my evolutionary process. And so I guess I would tell my younger self, hey, um, <laughs> I did great with STDs, by the way, in my, all my sexual explorations. I'm really <laughs> proud of myself for that. But I would have a little bit of that with my, myself and say, hey, as long keep yourself safe like have the talks use your intuition feel and is this right are they telling the truth have they been tested all that kind of stuff right Mm -hmm. um um, but beyond that give yourself permission to explore a little bit more edge and take care of yourself along the way because that is the process of your evolution of your sexuality and your connection to your animal is the process of itself of exploring yourself, expressing in ways that may seem edgy and different and raw and real, overcoming blockages and challenges that might come up in the way of you um, expressing your fullness um, and emoting what comes up as a result of that honest self-expression is part of what shapes you into who you are and who you are, are you as a sexual being as well. And so I'd say to myself, give yourself permission uh, and, and I already did it right. So I would tell myself the same thing that I did, which was just be smart uh, and follow the advice my parents gave me. And so thank you so much to my um, parents. Um, my stepmother, Marianne, and my father would sit us on the edge of the bed. I had three sisters. We had sex talks from when I was a little kid, by the way. No I had way. women all the way around in every single house around me. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. And I had a lot of sexual energy around me. I'll finish this, this statement. And so I got an introduction to this from a very young age and I've experienced more in, in, in the childhood than a lot of guys have. Okay. And my parents would sit me on the end of the bed and said, sex is a beautiful thing. It's okay if you're gay or straight. We don't care to my sisters as you can have, it's the most beautiful thing you'll ever experience as long as you love each other, hmm. as long as you love each other, you really love each other. And that has rung true. A man who's been polyamorous and had infinite access to 10 out of 10 can have them all at the same time or one day out of the week is now realizes that that is the most true statement that I've ever heard in my entire life. And I've evolved my sexuality so that instead of having all of the everything, just cause you can mm-hmm. reserving it only for the one that you're ready to worship and truly dedicate yourself to. Mm. <sighs> 
Beautiful. Thanks for that. A lot of people listening probably did not experience the beautiful conversation that your parents led you through. So thank you to your parents for the ripple effects that they have catalyzed throughout your life and throughout all the lives that you're touching and throughout all the lives that those people are touching. And um, you, at one point, you touched my life in a way that I'd love to start off with a story and then we'll, we'll, we'll go from there because it ties in perfectly to what you've talked about. I remember first seeing you, uh, not officially meeting you, but first being around you at a pyramid in the jungle of an island in Thailand called Koh Phangan. Tell me the story. <laughs> Tell me the yeah. story. And so it's an ecstatic dance. And it, you know, if you've never been to this island, it's wild. It's a wild island. People call it Tantra Island. There's more Tantra workshops than you could possibly imagine, you know, and there's, I don't know, over a hundred people at this giant pyramid in the middle of the jungle. And I'm dancing in there. I'm having a good time. And I see this guy just super embodied dancing really sexy with this woman. And I'm like, wow, that's sweet. That's awesome. And then I just like see him, you a minute later, you're dancing really sexy with this other woman. And then I was like, oh shit. I'm like triggered or annoyed or like mad or like, you know, all, all this stuff came up and I was like, oh, who the fuck is this guy? Like, what does he think? Is he a sexual predator? Like, what is he doing? Is he going around trying to get all these different women, you know? And I was like, oh God, I, I don't like this guy. This guy's bad. You know, this guy's bad. And then I like danced with that. I danced with that. And eventually I realized, oh man, the women he's dancing with, they are actually appearing to really enjoy this. They're appearing to- <laughs> They're appearing to be fully in it. He's not grabbing them and holding them there. Oh, this is like, I want this. You know, he's like, he's showing me something that I want to experience that I am not experiencing. Okay. What is that? You know, what is that? Can I say something to that a little bit? Please. Super beautiful share, by the way. I really appreciate this, uh, bringing this in there. And I'm glad that you were there. I actually got kicked out of that space because I was so free. And what happens is that initial phase where you project it outwards for a moment happens with everybody and more intensely with some. They don't look inwards and say, oh, this is my stuff. And they pursue it and try to get me kicked out of places. And I can play a part in it. I think I can rise above a little bit better, but I used to play into it and um, be confrontational and point out their flaws and all that stuff and get myself kicked out. You know, I was correct, but I would anyways. So I got kicked out of that place that you're talking about Mm. for holding a woman who was crying. The woman yeah. came over and said, that is inappropriate. And I was like, you are, this is violence. Please, I have a boundary. Do not interact with me while I, and I was emotionally caring for a woman. She left. I went outside. This was the woman who was in charge, the Latina lady. I can't remember her name. <laughs> Anyways, I'm sure she's a sweet woman. And we went outside to talk and she said, I got complaints. And I was like, well, you could look for yourself to see that I was just petting her head and she was crying. <laughs> and so yeah. use discernment. But she couldn't, and many people can't. When a trigger happens, the community and the individual often thinks that the external stimuli is the cause, but it rarely is, less than 1%. Typically, it's from a core wound that has not been properly processed, which expresses as aspects of self not in coming to life yet that we're white, we want, and we, then we project there, you're dangerous, you're bad, you're wrong. Mm-hmm. But some men and some women are like you. And I have one here in my house right now. He's I'm so happy. They go, I'm triggered. And then they come to me and they say, I'm, I'm triggered. And I want to know what the fuck is going on here and what's happening with you. And I want to learn and overcome this. And that's a certain caliber of consciousness. You've had a lot of iterations already. A novice consciousness, a young one would not do that. And so I will bow to you for being at that level. (laughs) And thank you for the story, brother. Yeah, thank you. And thanks for that experience. And thanks for acknowledging the potential shadow aspects of you also that might have contributed to the confrontationalness that added to that. And and it sounds sounds like you're comfortable with the fact that people are activated or triggered by your presence in some way. Like you're a unique person. You know, you seem to celebrate your uniqueness also with tattoos and looks like uh, possibly scarification adornments and like this sort of thing. And so was, was there ever a time when you were like concerned about that or anxious about what people thought of you and, and was there a wake up, a wake up moment? Yes. Um, so there's, 
let me see. This has been a complete journey for me. My life actually has been dedicated to this. This has been like, I'm integrating this final piece. So there's layers we have to go through connection to self connection to others, then connection to community. So another, so a partner. So I have a friend or some other individual. So we got the individual connection to myself, all aspects of self, then to another individual, perhaps romantic love, like really deep connection. And then we move on to larger sectors like community and then the planet. And many of us have just been at the bottom part right here. And I have explored myself and I have quite a strong relationship with myself. So I've um, focused on relationships pretty much most of my life and use it as a mirror of sorts to, to find more of myself as, as well. Mm -hmm. And then I mastered the relationships level. And so then I went to community level and creating cultures and the ways that community interrelate with one another and the reality that all of us are interrelating within how we talk and how we touch one another, polysensuality, playfulness, unconditional love, care, tenderness, all boundaries around sex and just like really high vibe, loving a, a experience of community around me. Once you've mastered that, so you're event master, I'm an event master. I fucking lubricate the space so beautifully. People are transcending from the moment they step in and connecting on levels they never have before. And so once we master that level, then we go planetary and we move beyond out into our relations. And so I've been on what you're talking about here is understanding how I'm affecting other people and modulating my honest self-expression to, to codependently placate the wounds of individuals who have not done the work yet is stopping a process. And I realized that just because hats make you uncomfortable doesn't mean that people wearing hats are wrong. And so instead of us stifling the empowered and telling them you're kicked out of this place and you can't do that because so-and-so is uncomfortable, we want to have places where these people can share and be held and cared for and learn and grow beyond their wounds that are actually creating their triggered response to what's happening right now. Let's take a breath to that, everyone listening. <laughs> <sighs> <sighs> Beautiful. So embodiment, I'd love to go into this topic of embodiment with you because it seems so, so, so crucial. And I want to start with a quote uh, that I got from, I believe it's one of your videos I was watching earlier today. You said, your power is directly correlated to your level of authentic self-expression. Your uniqueness is what makes you special, interesting, and worth paying attention to. And most important of all, respected by yourself. And then you go on to say, a great place to begin your realignment with your power, yourself, and your true life path is embodiment. And so I see a lot of your videos on social media, and I remember seeing you in person doing a lot of dancing and a lot of movement and a lot of breath. And I'm wondering, what, what is it, you know, what do you, what's coming through I'm hearing this question? Thank you so much. It is a buzzword. Embodiment. It's like one of those things, you know, like 2022 buzzword, 2021 as well, perhaps for a few more years, but it's just like, right. what does that even mean? So yeah, if there's exactly. an athlete who is agile and can do Olympic style movements, really precise and powerful, mm -hmm. but is emotionally inept, doesn't connect well in social situations, is he embodied? If we have an individual who's really good at socializing, who knows how to connect with others really well, how to feel and express, but it's just like falling and bumping against things, breaking shit, falling over. It's just like a spaz. Are they embodied? Okay. So it doesn't have to do with your adroitness, your agility, your speed. It doesn't have to do with your level of emotionality, but they both do integrate together in some sort of spectrum. And what I believe for me has created the most clarity around what the embodied experience is because that's the best teacher i can tell you all day how a rose smells and if you can't smell out of your nose or tell you what chocolate tastes like but if your tongue is not working right now it just so i think the best thing is for you to experience what embodiment feels like um yeah. and that's been the best teacher for me all right so i can do a really mm -hmm. short thing where we just get into a state of embodiment right now great because that's the best teacher. Let's do it. And so if it's hard for you, you can close your eyes, but you don't have to. And you know, I invite people to do that who are novices that you know really follow that and maybe do it. Um, so you wanna settle into wherever you're at and ask yourself if you're really present here right now. 
Am I really present here right now? And you feel for the answer, not listen. And we sense the energy body and how it's vibing. So there's a buzzing, tingling, glowing pulsation. There might feel like contractions that even make their way to the physical flesh. And so you can soften your body anywhere it's holding and then also check in beneath the body now. Is there any energetic constriction? Holding pattern, resistance. That's a resistance to the feelings that are in the field right now, emerging from within you and also around you. So the feelings from, coming from inside the quantum layer of the molecules that make up your body and also from the field or the energy field around you of all material and all beings. And so we may be resisting it and what we want to do is welcome that in. Feel that more. So you're looking to turn up the HD richness. And some of these things are uncomfortable. We don't want to feel them. These ones need to be felt as well. So, so am, we're I looking, you, am I looking for like tightness or warmth or heat or tension or? That's uh, a great question. Okay. So I'm going to tune you into the layer of awareness of how you can feel your energy field. Mm -hmm. So I'd like you to um, listen right now. Listen to the sounds that are going on around you off in the distance further than you were hearing a moment ago. The subtle sounds that you can hear beyond your earphones that maybe are traffic or animals or something very distant and faint. And also hear the very near sounds as well. And notice now that every single sound feels different, although they're all landing audibly on your eardrums. They're landing in different places on your actual physical body within your emotional body. And different sounds have different feelings. That sounds quite different from my voice. And it feels in a different place. And this sound you'll feel somewhere else. Feel, notice on your energy field where each one of these different sounds is landing. And every song you hear on the radio has different elements to it. And each one of those, like the hi-hat or the drum, are landing on different areas on your auric field. So you sense where that was. Sense where my voice is landing. And now pay attention to whether or not you are allowing that energy to enter or you're squeezing. So we're paying attention to the, the aspect of this feeling at that location. Am I resisting, contracting, or surrendering to whatever this sensation is? And it may be a tingling, glowing, pulsation, contraction, expansion, a buzzing, a feather-like sensation. And it's the same level of feeling that you felt when you located, you biolocated where the wavelengths of sound were landing on your auric field. That's the level of sensitivity I need you to have to eat in order to understand how you're interfacing with the energy field around you. So I'd like you to feel how the sounds feel in your body to open your eyes and see everything without looking at anything. So you kind of see beyond your device and you want to see the peripheral vision off the left and right, the ceiling and the floor while still hearing and feeling what the sounds feel like and the auric feel. Now I'll try to clear up the vision a little bit, bring it into focus, still seeing left and right wall easily legs and above, not really focusing on anything. Now sense how the different colors, shapes, all the different things, feel within your auric field and where they're actually landing on your consciousness. If I hold up a glass of orange juice or fruit, it will, you'll feel it somewhere versus if you see a glass of dog poop. Okay. And you want to see where am I feeling these energy frequencies within me that I see. So we're combining now hearing more and feeling how, where are the sounds landing, seeing more at the same time and paying attention to how those visuals feel and then we feel our emotional layer as well what's your vibe your emotional body how you doing just sense that with those other three things we do this in a wordless state of presence we focus on the sensations and if words enter the mind we focus on how they feel the energy behind the story not the meaning of the words and we integrate that as part of our meditation which is feeling the frequency of this story that's coming up in my mind 
while I'm trying to be in a state of ultra presence, embodied presence. So presence comes from the five faculties of the physical body being tuned into. Yes, there's an interface of the biology. There's an eardrum, there's skin, whatever. But there's also another interface, which is the timeless aspect of yourself interfacing with this world energetically through your emotional body, which permeates the flesh out into the field as a kind of a toroid from the center of you. And so what we're trying to do here is use the five faculties of the physical body to tune into how their frequencies actually feel to get palpable frequency information about reality around us, not just the imagery and the sound itself. So we're paying less attention to what we see. We're paying more attention to how what we see feels. And we're noticing how we're interfacing with that feeling. Are we resisting it or are we welcoming it to us? And at that juncture of sensation, we can understand how we are dictating our reality. Because if I resist that thing, it perpetuates, it creates suffering. It comes into my, it can't properly move through my field and it stays and toxifies. And it's going to continue to come up in random times in the future until you give it a chance to be felt. And so in the moment, there are going to be sensations that arise emotionally and vibrationally associated with your thought patterns and what's emerging around you. You want to integrate that into the process of seeing and feeling and paying attention and hearing and feeling and paying attention to how you're interfacing with the energy. And this is easier than it thinks. I know it sounds complicated now but you can do it from awake until asleep in the background while you do everything else in your life. Mm. And this is an embodied state. Yeah. Okay. Mm. A embodied state of being. Mm -hmm. Yeah. An embodied state of being. And, and I would, you know, I was going to share this till later in this interview, but I just want to like make this really practical what you're talking about too. When you're using the senses to tune into the deeper layers of what's going on, there's almost another sense going on there where you're mm -hmm. beyond the five senses. And I remember, um, we'll bring it into sex and sexual attraction. Then I'll circle back around to what I was going to go into. But I remember being in one of your workshops in Thailand on this island, actually. And it was a dance workshop, kind of like a dance play party sort of thing. And I remember being in this room and as I normally did, as I still do, you know, I like notice the people I'm physically attracted to like, oh, she's gorgeous. Look at that woman over there, you know, and like kind of taking count of the room, all this stuff. And you guided us through this exercise of moving our bodies, dancing through the space, noticing who you're attracted to, noticing where you're pulled. And then you had us all pause and stay perfectly still in our physical bodies, but tune in really deeply to whatever else we were feeling in that moment, call it energy, call it sensation. You had us tune deeply into that realm of awareness. And then you had us imagine that we were dancing our energy body, you know, to dance while keeping our physically physical body perfectly still. And mm -hmm. then, yeah. And then mm -hmm. you had us drop, like notice our physical attractions in the room and, and drop them and then start to move through this room being led by our energetic pull or the gravitational pull or some sort of internal somatic impulse to go a particular direction. And then to pay attention to wherever that pull was taking us. And it was the most fascinating experience for me because what I learned, I remember this moment of coming into face-to-face -face contact with this woman who I originally thought like, you are so fucking gorgeous. Like I want to dance with you. And I didn't feel any energetic pull at all with this person. And it was fascinating. It was so fascinating. And yeah. Can I talk and, about and, this for and, one second? It'll take me two minutes. After yeah. Let me done. just, yeah. Let me just share this last little piece. And so just part I, those, remind me about this part though, that you, when you got to her, there wasn't an actual draw there. Cause I want to touch on that for a sec after you're done. Go. Yeah. Yeah. So where there was a draw was with this, like this person who I never would have guessed I would have been drawn to in that way. It was the oldest woman in the room. Maybe she was late sixties, wow. early seventies. I don't remember exactly, but there was a strong energetic pull between us. And the two of us ended up having this super sexy dance all up on each other where there was so much sexual energy flowing and it was really incredible, you know, and it was a really 
amazing experience for me and a good reminder of like all the times in the past where I had hooked up with or kissed a, a hot person and, and missed this entire other layer. So there's a feeling that we have that has to be there for real alchemy, but the mind has ideas about what it wants yeah. and it pursues particular people based on some shadowy aspects of ourselves, some beautiful ones too, but mostly shadowy aspects of ourselves. A lot of it is a program of what we believe is valuable. Okay. But yeah. we've been, we usually reach for an idea and not the actual feeling, right? We've been trained to do that. And so what you did, what you did at that practice was reintegrate your compass, how you guide yourself through life to be internal. So you don't have an external locus of control, nor a mind created locus of control. You have an internal locus of control, internal compass, your internal gurus, your feelings, your vibe, mm -hmm. right? So that's that intuition we're talking about. So you can move like a cat, like a wild cat, just feeling and like, is there like any danger? How should I act now? And just like not having to think. Right. So that feeling sense of who you are, of guiding yourself through a space and through life is tuned in to the feeling and using that instead of using this, because this is where the ego lies mm -hmm. and it's a program. And there's this also our connection to the collective ego as well, where the collective yeah. hive mind affects us through the opinions of others. And so and what you did was you found an access. For those of you listening, he's pointing at his head, just by the way. Yeah. The head. For, oh, where they the can't see located. me. Oh, there will be people listening to the podcast me. who won't be able to see it you oh, know, while I they're see, walking around. I yeah. See. Thank you so much. <laughs> Some I people see. will be Thank able to you see so it. Much. Yeah. Cool. Sorry. Okay. I think I'm talking really. too much about that. I can go off on that subject a lot. I don't want to go too <laughs> deep into the ego and how to find your true path, like listening to your intuition and feelings rather than your thoughts. I have recorded a lot of videos about that that are on Facebook. Yeah. And so I think I want to stay on topic of what you want to talk about. Cool. Yeah. So that's, that's, a, it's a fascinating experiment. And I think it's just, it's worth noting if you're listening to this or watching some of this, that this might be part of the reason why you think you're really physically attracted to somebody and you might physically feel that draw from your penis, but then you realize that there's actually not a charge there. There's not actually magic there. And there's not actually depth that is right for the two of you to cultivate. You know, there's also biological factors, you know, if you're totally. not, if you, if she's got a lot of perfume on, you can't smell it. If you got a lot of perfume on, she can't smell it. Her animal needs to smell your BO and the scent of your, your lingam and you need to smell her. And we can tell exactly. from far away if there's nothing blocking it, whether or not we're biologically compatible. And the wisdom of the body is regulating the, the use of your erection. And so don't take Viagra. Uh, don't try to force it. Um, don't try to get yourself hard when you're not really horny with her. Just like um, follow what's really coming through biologically and just say, I want you. <laughs> Yeah. I, my, my heart wants you, but biologically, yeah. I mean, there's, I, you, you, you smell bad to me and you don't yeah. stink. I mean, just like, for me, there's not a jive there. When totally. I kiss you, your breath doesn't smell good. Um, and these are indicators to tell us that our offspring is going to have dysfunction. The body is choosing the best uh, gene allele from the combinations of the parents. And it knows what genes that other being has based on its smells, the taste of its saliva, and some of the schmegma, the stuff that comes off the top of the penis ahead, and also the vagina. And that communicates right. a lot of whether or not we should be in a relationship to each other. And so we want to listen to that too. Totally. And also be mindful of the impact of hormonal birth control on women because that can actually flip that sense 180 degrees to where we're actually attracted to somebody who's actually not a good genetic match for us. That's a whole other tangent to go on to, but that's that's worth <laughs> noting and, and worth worth exploring if you've never heard that before. Um, I want to go into into relationships. I want to go into relationships, into relating and into embodiment within relationships. And I think that's uh yeah, we're all we all like we have we're all in relationships with various people at all the time, you know, and specifically romantic and sexual relationships. It's an area where a lot of us men, a lot of us with penises, we can spend a lot of time in our heads when maybe it's not actually as beneficial for us to be in our heads, you know. And one of the things that I've heard you mention and that I've mentioned and I've heard a lot of people mention is, you know, at least I'm 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 interested in women sexually. It seems like you are. We'll talk about our personal experiences here for a moment. Like women, in my experience, like they really want to feel my heart. They really want to feel a man's heart, you know, versus just like the guy who's showing up intellectually doing the right things. But most of us men in our culture, we've been socialized that 
emotions are bad, feelings are bad, and you're weak and you're not strong if you have these things. And so there's a lot of conditioning up for us to ultimately like protect ourselves in some way from feeling, from feeling, <laughs> you know, and we don't allow ourselves to actually do this in relationship. And so what, what is allow her to feel your heart mean? Like, how do we open our hearts? You know, how do we f- exist in that space in relating? Okay. Thank you so much for this question. It is very intelligent. And what you're talking about here is how do we not put the cart before the horse? Okay. How do we not be plastic fantastic and pretend and be a facade and try and attempt and all put on a show and do the, you know, the, the formulas and, and move the way we're told. No, this is about, um, there's not like a, a methodology of way that's going to get her to like make, you know, like feel your love. It's about you actually feeling it, right? So we don't pretend like, I don't want to like do things to make you feel my heart. Like, okay, I'm doing this so that you feel my heart. Here, I I got you this. You feel my heart? You know, so we're not doing (laughs) acts or behaving certain ways to achieve her understanding our heart. We are actually in our heart. So we feel our heart. And so um, it's going to be complicated for a lot of guys who feel like their pee is going to fall off if they feel emotions and that's gay. Okay, now- Gay is okay. It doesn't mean it's okay for you. And that's cool. Do what you want to do. But like using that as a metric of whether or not you want to feel the fullness of who you are is kind of unintelligent. Right. Yeah. Okay. And so I think what we need to do is give ourselves access to the heart and men have at the core, we are love. We are the heart. Okay. But then we have res- hurt and resentment and anger and fury and murderous rage. And we can't go through those layers because some of those are unsafe to feel. And then they're blocking us from getting back to the core of who we are. And so we need to do some work of embodiment to express some of those more shadowy, scary feelings. It's called shadow work for a little period of time, insulated from anybody else being affected by it. Sound waves, shock waves, any of that kind of self-expression. And then that purging that in a wordless state of presence, just feeling, embodying and expressing and letting it move through you like fully, then it creates a clear channel, a clear energy field. And most likely you'll be able to just be present through all your senses. And this is a gift all men have. We can do this. Yeah. This is part of our superpower of being a man. It's just like, I'm here. You know, the simple man, you know, he's watching TV, he's using it then. The wife's like, why are you checked out? And we got shamed for that in school um, for, for checking out. But that is the presence. Guys are just spaced out, like totally here, but like not. We need to be able to get to that level of presence with the moment so we can actually feel what's here. No thinking, just like, I'm here, I'm feeling, I'm seeing. And so we need to do the purgative work so that we can start feeling what's at the core. Sadness is going to be the last layer right before you feel your love again. So Mm -hmm. murderous rage, fury, anger, I I feel resentment. I I point a finger to you. You're the reason why. And I I express that. I feel the hurt. Oh, you hurt me. (laughs) And then I get a chance to, when I express that hurt, have that person show up for me. And then I go, oh, you do care. Oh, you care. And then I get back to love again because I feel loved. Mm -hmm. And it's a game our our infancy mind wants to do. We always want somebody else to do it first. Like, love me first before I love you, right? You need to be nice to me first before I'm nice to you. We need to make up. Well, you need to say sorry first. Okay. And so I think in this practice of feeling our heart, we need to open ourselves up to the pain body response, all those layers, and then start paying attention. Like, let yourself show your hurt because that's Mm -hmm. that's part of your love. It's just like... You know, and so your it's part of your heart, it's part of your tenderness, right? And so showing that and getting cared for it lets you feel loved by them, you appreciate them. And we start doing things that are an expression of our love for people, not because we're trying to make them feel loved, but because it feels like love. And and not I'm not talking about buying stuff for people, although all the love language matters. I'm talking about feeling my love. If I love you, brother. And I'm just feeling my love for you and it overwhelmed me and the pleasure and it's emanating out of me and you're going to feel my love. I don't even have to do anything. I just need to feel it and let myself be it. And it'll change my facial expressions and my tonality and how I touch you, how close I am. But there's going to be a much deeper layer of communication going on that moves beyond action, purchasing things, saying things. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the best communicators possibly. If you want to feel your heart, feel the block stuff, feel your tenderness. You can have a practice of focusing on your heart whenever you're awake. What's the sensations? And that might assist you in feeling more there. But love is a frequency that you can, you can 
you can create. And I just taught in the last video that I did on Facebook, it's called the meta love practice and it is in the title. So I'm not going to go deep into that right now. I think I'd like to expand on any of the points that I've already talked about right now and see mm -hmm. if you have any questions on that or you want to talk about something different. Yeah. I, well, just to riff on this for a moment, um, <sighs> love, feeling love, embodiment, feeling all the things. I remember reading another thing that you shared where you were saying men are not designed for talk therapy, you know? And, and I remember like I've, I've gone to therapy. I, you know, cert, cert, at certain points, I think therapy is great. And also I remember going through a week long intensive ritual that was all around embodiment, going into some of the things that you talked about that felt more opening to me than like three years worth of talk therapy, you know? And it, it made me realize like I, and every guy I know, every, every guy I knew at that time, and still I'm like living with layers from society, but like was living in this place of having just all these layers of just shame or fear or numbness or lack of feeling because I had never actually gone into all these things that I had been carrying around my entire life, you know? And so I think it's really easy for us as men to intellectualize this and to talk about it and to think, oh yeah, well, that's great. Well, I'll just cry. I'll just feel my emotions. I'll just feel my heart. And the actual practice is, it seems, you know, actually like when you feel that impulse to cry, if, if emotions come up, like allowing yourself to do that, not pushing it down, you know, when you feel an impulse to feel, actually feel and, and yeah. So what we need to do is learn the skills to do that so that we, ha we can, um, part of it is needing to know the rules of it. You can't do it in public spaces with other people who are going to be affected. If I take a newborn yeah. and I do a rage practice right in front of its face, it's going to die. Right. Okay. So let's just, I'm, that's a, I'm so sorry for saying that, but that it's a form of violence. And right. so um, anybody who hears the sounds or the shock waves or anything while you're emoting is going to be affected and it's going to right. cause drama. So we want to make sure that we insulate ourselves. One of the things that guys do is say, oh, I'll wait till it's a, a better time to like get into this. Right now it's not appropriate. Mm -hmm. So we use our intellect, right? No, go, I'll be right back. Go outside, go in the car, turn on the um, shower, the, the water, um, go for a run outside in the park, to the beach. Real, as, as quickly as you can get away, backside of the building, whatever and fucking feel and express it doesn't have to be loud go into what do you want to feel and feel it and do it in private and let just but don't go in words okay and so we want to be feeling and expressing and it's authentic it's just feeling based i'm not hurting anybody or making any drama and that's important this is going yeah. to give you more permission to do it if you do this in front of people they're going to be traumatized and so yeah. you'll feel as though your emotional expression is wrong and further solidify your disconnect from doing it. And so you mm -hmm. want to do it in ways that are intelligent. No drama. We're being emotional, but not dramatic. And so also, if you, you don't know how to give yourself what you need yet. So when a feeling comes up, I would rather just like try to make it go away and feel better. <sighs> <sighs> right. So when guys need to learn that we have when they have feelings, we deal with that first, then we go on to anything else that we wanted to do. So we're not trying to feel better, we're trying to feel more. We're increasing our threshold for handling high levels of intensity of frequencies that we typically have suppressed. Fear, we're going towards it. Methodically, don't push yourself into the trigger zone. Stay in the challenge zone. Don't Because you go past right. the trigger zone, you're in a trauma zone, you know what I mean? Right. And so we right. do things that are edgy and we feel a lot, we express in ways that are methodically, uh, as you express, you're in, at the same time increasing your threshold. And why are we doing this? Because we want to be able to feel these feelings and not be controlled by them, have choice and agency in the moment. So we usually don't want feelings because when I get triggered, shit gets bad. And so yeah. we need to be able to control ourselves in the moments that we have high levels of an intense energy coming in. So we can still navigate life in a way that creates healing for everyone involved. And there's some technology involved with that. It's extensive, but to yeah. synopsize it, it's really the easiest thing is you have to understand empathy, how to feel for yourself and, ex and give yourself what you need and then feel for others and give them what they need. And in that emotional conversations will ensue that become the focal point of your experience. No longer here. We're really focusing on feelings of each other back and forth. And that's the, that's the theme of our lives for a while. Yeah. Yeah. 
and this isn't some just high level esoteric concept. Like this is really practically applicable to our lives too. It's, it's like you go do these practices and you have better romance, you have better sex, you have better relationships, you have better friendships, you have better relationships with your family. Like it directly impacts the quality of your connections in all these areas, you know? So it's worth it for the sake of your life and everybody that you're connected to. You know, I, I love that. You know, it's not just, oh, I'm just going to go experience my rage because it's the most spiritual thing to do. Like, no, it's actually like it improves every aspect of your life to do this in a healthy way. And I Can think I it's also why. Really, yeah, please. I tell them how. Because it, it, when your energy is high, when you're in a stressed state, brothers, it's very hard for you to enjoy even your own birthday party. Okay. And so if your parasympathetic nervous system is activated and you're on the fucking brink of snapping all the time and you're just trying to keep it together and cool, or you're feeling apathy and disconnected from life because it just like the weight of the world is on your shoulders or the relationships are kind of out of order. You're just trying, I know you're just trying to keep it together. Well, your feelings need space too. And we talked about an embodiment practice. There's so much more information on my Facebook page that recently with extensive workshops and information about this, but this is a massive part of our process is embodiment. And that means you, the, connecting to the emotional body. We ha, it's going to be messy at first. You have to purge out that stuff, feel it so you can increase your threshold. So when it comes up in real life, you can change the way you behave in that situation and see a positive outcome and get the feedback that you need of direct experience to teach you something different about the thing that you used to be triggered about. So when I fucking got flared up, instead I was like vulnerable, open, shared what's going on. And I got the support I needed. I don't feel so triggered by that subject anymore. I feel loved and cared for and we feel connected and in love. So we manifest a new reality of stepping into, you know, by stepping into vulnerability, openness, love. And there are methodologies for communication that are super simple to learn because they're theme based. It's not like which words to say. It's like keep them along a certain vein of topic. Right. And so we need to learn how to um, navigate that with our partners so that we feel free to embody who we are in our sexuality, in our relationships with money and everything, our families, because yeah. that's part of who we are. It's the animal family. That's part totally. of the diagram that I made. If, I just want to tell your, your audience, I made a, an infographic that's really informative and might give you some insights in yourself at my website, lionegalbon.com. And you scroll down a little bit and it shows all the archetypes that I've laid out. And I'd like you to go there because this teaches you a lot about what him and I are talking about right now and access points for understanding them within yourself. Okay, because us that's men awesome. don't try to be what you people are telling you what a man is. Be what your unique version of a man is. And it's an amalgamation of all of the archetypes that I've chosen. Your spiritual essence, your primal animal nature. This is the part of you that's man. It has the genitalia and the testosterone. Your consciousness is hermaphroditic. But you want to connect to your masculine? We connect to our body. There's a feeling that comes through, but is it really masculine or feminine? Who knows? These are constructs. But we want to bring in the elements of the dark masculine, the capacity to penetrate life and take action with its polar opposite, the light feminine, who cares for you and nurtures and makes sure everybody is taken care of. They complement one another so the dark masculine can express with precision and care for people and create win-win scenarios. You need to integrate your light masculine and your dark feminine. The light masculine creates a plan of action using logic, reason, deduction to create strategy to hold space for the chaos of your dark feminine, your victim, mm -hmm. your pain, your shame, your guilt. Okay, and your animal you use to connect to your spiritual essence as well. Your spiritual essence is the buzzing, the vibrating, the feelings that come through. Your emotions are your timeless self. It's a spiritual aspect of our experience, your feelings. And so we need to integrate that into the human experience by actually feeling palpably the frequencies through us and emoting them out into the world. Emotions, energy, and motion. Move the energy, the feelings out into the world somehow and bring us the, the ideas and energy into the 3D world. And that's how we're interfacing with reality here. And so if we can amalgamate a unique little mixture of each one of these archetypes, you'll find out the unique man that you are. And you're the dictator of what's it's right. You know, if you're living in alignment with yourself or not, you yeah. know, and then we have, we can't be pressured by outside. You need to feel what feels right for you and whatever wants to come through. It feels full, honest. Yes. And it's in the light and it's transparent and it's vulnerable and open. It's going to be supported. It's going to be supported. Okay. 
Beautiful. So, so bringing that into the context of sex and desire, I noticed a thing that happened to me and that happens to a lot of men who are starting to do, starting to do some of this work, diving into emotions, uh, like working with desire and sex in general, that even still, like there's, there's a lot of guys who hold some shame around their desires you know, mm-hmm. shame around their mm-hmm. desires and shame around bringing their desires to their partner and fear to bring their desires to their partner mm-hmm. in, you know, for a lot of different reasons. And one of those reasons also is because men don't want to be, a lot of men don't want to be perceived as like the toxic man, you know, who has like the the dirty man desires or or whatever. So in terms of being your true authentic self and honoring your desires, how... How would you say like you can bring those like first own them within yourself, but then bring them to your partner in a way that is authentic and is connective and, and does have heart in it. Even if your desire is to like, whatever, you know? Okay. Um, is that, does that kind of yeah, make sense? I got it right here. I'm just making a quick <laughs> note. Okay. So, um, yeah, just cut Johnny a couple words down there in my little notebook. Everybody has to have these. Okay. Just keep them with you all the time. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, so the first let's address the fear that men are feeling. They're walking on eggshells because the men that came before them overstepped boundaries like crazy. The masking was expressing with laser focus without any integration of the light feminine and didn't care what it did. And it created destruction along the way. And it's still kind of happening now, but it's, it's falling apart. There's residual. Now, I'm not saying that we should go to a matriarchy and kill the patriarchy. I think we should have an integration of the masculine and feminine in a healthy way. So um, the fear that men are feeling is because they don't have the light feminine skills integrated within them yet. So they truly haven't embodied the divine mother goddess energy of the nurturer, like really just unconditional love. And you have to do that with all of the men and brothers and sisters around you. So I love you and I really fucking love you. And I, I really do. I express that. I feel that. I be it. Uh, it's not, I don't want anything back. That, that's just unconditional. It's really easy to practice. Some people are a-holes and you want to keep space from them, but you can still love them too. Okay. And so, um, if we can un- understand unconditional love and em- that access point to empathy, we can care for other people and how they might be affected through our dark masculine expression. And the men don't have the skills to do that yet. How do I deal with your mind and your emotions as they arise from my honest self-expression? Now, part of it has to do, I have to deal with my own ego backlash as well. And my own emotions that arise and they don't have the skills to do that yet. So it's a very scary prospect to face positive, ne- possible negative consequences, the opinions of others, possible rejection, emotional turmoil, conversation is hard. And we have to have the skill set to be able to do that. And I teach that already a ton. We have to have a whole other conversation about that. Right, right, but yeah. when we know how to do that, we're not in fear of expressing our masculine anymore. It's action because we know I can take care of you. And I'm so empathetically aware that as I'm making my decisions, I'm process oriented. So I've got my masculine and feminine integrated. I have my strategy plan of action, what I'm moving towards, but I'm also feeling and paying attention to I feel along the way and how you feel and the feedback I'm getting from the universe. So I'm modulating based on that. So I have the feminine masculine integrated in the process itself of my self-exploration of, of, of my sexuality with you, right? And let me tell you this, that hands down, one of the most interesting compliments I get from women, and I'm not going to tell you all the kudos and praise and how they tell me I'm the best ever and no one ever can, I'm not going to go into that. But they tell me is um, <laughs> one of the things I love most about um, when we made love or how when we make love is how you just let yourself really enjoy me. Like you are so turned on and you're expressive of it and you're focusing on these certain points that you love. Mm-hmm. And, and what I do is I go through moments of just really letting myself, ah, oh, oh, like, wow, you know, and then exploring and almost touching and then moments of stillness and light touch and emoting and then back to like, oh my God. So these mm-hmm. oscillating through different textures of expression organically based on how she's receiving me help gave her um, experiences in the bedroom that gave me, per- just made her like, wow, wow, wow. And it gave me more permission to just go, oh, so it's okay to like follow what feels good and like express what feels good. And that actually gave her permission to be more in her feels. And so mm-hmm. guys are coming into intimacy with a heady kind of like, okay, so uh, I got to make sure I do the one hour of foreplay. I'm going to lick here, touch here, twist that knot, push that there. I'm going to get this right. I'm sick there. She's going to come. I'm come. We're done. Okay. Yeah. So instead of let, having an agenda, what we do is we show up to an organic kind of expression of our feelings. That's like emotional and juicy and real. You're like, you're just showing who you are. And sometimes there's moments of like, oh, you're raw sexiness, but you're just 
noticing how it changes and just and oh, all of a sudden you two are uh, in a softness for a while, right? And then it goes back to that passion. So we have to be able to ride those waves with her and modulate what we're doing based on what we're feeling and the energetic feedback that we're getting with from her real time. Now, if you're not that sensitive, you can just see her body language. She's right. ah, yes, that's a full yes. And she's like, probably need to check in. Okay. And so you feel fear about your masculine expression because you don't have the skills of taking care of others. And also the artistry, uh, like it's just show yourself. You're afraid of that. She's going to get mm-hmm. hurt and mad. There's a likelihood that she won't. Now there's also a probability that she might. And so we need to understand how to um, explore boundaries with people non-verbally. And that was one of the events that you came to is sensing, feeling, expressing, noticing when they're saying no and changing. And so we have on the fly, the capacity to hold space for their feelings. If challenges come up, we also have the tools to modulate what we're doing based on how we're being received. We also feel free to totally express who we are. We're not in the head with words. So we're just showing what we feel. And so it's very pure. And so typically the situation is really magical. And so there's, if this kind of conversation has back and forth between you and your partner, it's very creative and out of the old patterns. It's a very new experience that you two have intimately. And often it leads to sex, but it's more passionate than you've ever had before because the two of you merge. Me and my partner, we talk about it while it's happening sometimes. My body is in her body, her consciousness and my, con- we're, we're together. Mm-hmm. And so um, I would say that the permission field that you create through your own emotional, son- honest self-expression gives her the permission. So I'm having an orgasm from the first couple minutes and I come the whole time for hours. And that losing my shit lets her go, oh, we can do that? <laughs> oh, yeah, I can do that too. And then it's the permission yeah. field for her orgasms just to be pouring and pouring and pouring and pouring out. So it, okay, it's so circling. the holding back brother is actually taking away from you both of her experience. So uh, let me just tell you an access point yeah, yeah. to this is asking her for permission for one, letting her know what you want to do. Look, babe, here's what I want to do. Like, I'm scared. It's uh, I want to know, like, what are our edges? What should I stay away from? And like, mm-hmm. I want to feel more free to be like X, Y, Z with you. Creating a culture with agreements and then then doing it and then checking in afterwards to see how it went. And what you want to do is feel as emotions come up. Because you might do some things that are really edgy sexually with your partner. And it might make you feel small and your little boy and her afraid. Or do you still love me? I don't know, man. And like, you have to express that and let her take care of you. And she's going to have stuff come up to her daddy wounds. You have to hold space for her. And this makes your sexual explorations absolutely healing and beautiful. And eventually you unlock and it's really passionate and amazing. You and your partner. When you open this up, we can be so vulnerable. Totally. You know, in our sexual explorations. Yeah. And so it seems it's all... On a base level, it's all coming back to embodiment too, you know, like not being in the head, having those conversations, but really showing up like in your heart, really with them, really present, tuning in, sensing, feeling. And then from that place, whatever conversation you have, whatever skills you use to communicate and connect is going to go a hundred times better than if you're just in your head, caught up thinking about it, not in your heart, not in your belly, you know? And just a real quick time check for the container of this call. Um, I noticed that there are eight minutes left for our originally scheduled time. And I'm wondering if that's uh, going to need to be a hard stop for you. Okay, great. Yeah, buddy. Well, then, I'm having a great do... time. I love the yeah. questions and I love the research you've done. Um, thank you. Then, but, yeah, yeah then let me, do, let me do one last question then to, uh, to wrap it up. And by the way, like we'll link to all your stuff. And there's a lot of awesome videos you put out there. And so, yeah, you'll be able to find much more of Lion out there. Uh, last thing, let's end on this. Um, you said somewhere, in one of your videos that I watched, learning to have a orgasm without ejaculation can save a relationship. Pretty big statement. Mm-hmm. Can you, uh, can you elaborate? Yes. Let me get simple. If you have a well beeped queen, you have a L- mm-hmm. well effed queen. Um, it was going to change the shape of how she interrelates with you. So she's going to feel worshiped and appreciated. I mean, it's not just how you pump and how hard and how long. I mean, it's like how you set the space, how you worship her, how you actually feel and touch her, how you express. And like, if she's really, it's not just the non-ejaculation. There's a lot more to our emotional connection, our spiritual connection that can be expressed, you know, making experiences tantalizing just because it feels good for you. And so um, when she receives that, she's going to step, feel really honored and safe and be able to flower more in your arms and surrender, which is what you want as a masculine. Now, this is, I'm not saying women should surrender and men should take control. No, men should offer 
and women should choose to uh, let go, choose to allow. So we're not forcing anybody. This is like a, everybody gets and every man gets to do this too. Mm-hmm. Okay. But she's going to flower more naturally and change the way that you, she interfaces with you and what you experience through you showing up really well for her that way. And so she's able to reach higher heights, have more orgasms. And you two are going through emotional experiences when you don't orgas- uh, ejaculate. And so I can go for two hours longer without ejaculating. There's physical techniques you can use, but I've got it now now to just like a, a single contraction with my muscle and a draw up and I can just keep going. And I'm coming for hours and it's intense. It's more intense than what you guys are experiencing with your little sneeze of an ejaculatory moment. And um, it's I'm screaming the whole time and I don't even know where I am and the world has stopped. And OK, so I don't want to get into it too much, but there's right. lots of crying and laughter. It's intense. Um, but when you can experience this then you can go through the emotional waves with her as well. And this is where the health of your relationship is going to thrive because you're going to, re- it's called making love. If you can read transcendental states of real love making, where you're absolutely madly in love with this person, you want to dedicate your life to them and worship them. And it's also exchanged and there's no toxicity in the field and you're making passionate, pleasurable, skillful love. Uh, you actually feel that vibe of un- divine union and why this relationship is so important and they're so important, you know, without having to hold on, but you understand the beauty that life has to offer through divine union. Mm-hmm. So I imagine you're not anti ejaculation. You're probably pro, uh, pro conscious ejaculation. You would say choice, ejaculatory choice. So when we make that choice, okay, when we make right. that choice and right. when we make it, it's like, for me, it's just like, if it's coming, it's like after a few hours and it's just like, it, it wants to come out. I haven't been moving. I'm just inside and we're just looking each other in the eyes and we're just goo goo eyes and just like heartgasms and like, whoa, 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 whoa. Like we haven't been moving. And it's like, it's, it's, we already been making love for a long time. It's coming. I can feel that's leaving the, the testicles going through the vast deference and it's, it, there's no stopping it now. Yeah. You just have to pull out and anoint Thank you, goddess. And like, and she's to receive and anoint her and say prayers on her heart, right down her midline, her back, her spine, on the sacrum. Give her a beautiful massage using your forearms, your hands, and anoint her. And that is going to actually absorb through her skin. And it has a very powerful, it's an essence. It's one of the most powerful fluids on the planet next to period blood. And so, um, you know, I, I use it as a ritual. And I let myself feel the pleasure of that and just fucking let it go. And it's bigger than you. It's crazy. And you guys, you've been holding back for so long. It's insane. <laughs> and it's so satisfying for you. You're just like, ah, with it. And she's like, has worked hard for this. And she doesn't get these moments very often. And so she really feels as though she's earned something beautiful here. Yeah. And it's a momentous moment for both of you. And it needs to be honored beautifully. Don't go like, fuck, I fucking want, didn't want it. Punching the wall and traumatizing her and yourself around your <laughs> orgasm. Yeah. Like, come on, like, this is a sacred moment. Anoint your, your goddess. And if any resistance will lower the energy level, you can't feel the pleasure. And so you want to go into full release, which is what I just did. Like pull it out and make that bad boy do his thing and feel your heart and the pleasure and push. (laughs) Like let it go and just feel the emotions and really celebrate this fucking moment and dive into it in its fullness and be an emotional mess. Just like collapse. (sighs) And don't have any words in your fucking mind. Just, (sighs) Just feel and don't think. Okay, stay engaged with her through contact, but stay in stillness in the mind and feel with her and just melt. Mm. Just melt together, silence, both of you. No silence, no words, feeling, being. Yeah, staying engaged, staying connected. Yeah. You got Beautiful. it. You got oh, it. Oh man, I feel like we could so probably talk. practices to- around that. They can find it on my, <laughs> hold on. They're going to find my Facebook. Yeah. It's a whole bunch. I just talked about it, how not to ejaculate. So two videos back on Facebook on mine. I don't know when you're going to launch this, but it'll be easy for you guys to find it if you read the titles. Yeah, it'll be within the next, uh, it'll be this month and it's March, 2022 right now. Uh, so yeah, it'll come cool. out. Okay. So, the, so it'll be in February guys. Look for those. February. Um, awesome. Cool. Well, I feel like we could do another couple of these as time goes on, but thank you so much for showing up here for this conversation. Let, let everybody know, uh, how can they find you if they want to, if they want to find more, I'll put, I mean, I'll put the um, links I, obviously in the show notes, but yeah, how, 
how can people find you? Okay, cool. Yeah. LionGalbon.com is my website, you know, where people can get um, information about uh, investigating a personalized journey with me into their own conscious evolution and manifesting what they want to be experiencing in their life. Um, and you can find me on Facebook, same name, Lion Gal Bon, and same on uh, Instagram. And I, that play, the Instagram I haven't really been using lately, but it's got a lot of gorgeous art and information on there. And Facebook is the one that I've been focusing on lately. I don't follow everybody, so follow me there. Um, there's a lot of interactivity. I can't, there's thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of friend requests. So just follow, hit the notifications bell, and you'll get when I post, which is regularly. Awesome. Yeah, there's a lot of good stuff. At least on the Instagram, I was checking that out this whole week preparing for this call. It's great stuff. So thank you. <sighs> thank you for showing up. Thank you, everybody, for listening. And oh, man. Yeah, look forward to the next time. <laughs>